Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Hello Hack. So today we'll discuss about how we can exploit Sunball server, where there's a Sunball service within the operating system that we're targeting against. And as looking at what are the files that are being shared or the temporary files that are being shared, and then exploit the particular module that is available within Metasploit that allow us to gain unauthorized access or privileges into the system. And we're able to mount the entire drive of the operating system that we're targeting against, look through the entire files, including password files, and be able to control and to manipulate the operating system as we like it by exploiting how the users actually share certain files and directories within the operating system. So let's begin. So on the left side of the screen, I have Call Linux running. So I am turn up the terminal and I can enter ifconfig. So I see the IP address as 192.168.1.19. And of course, this is going to be, Call Linux is going to be acting as the attacking machine. And on the right side of the screen, I have Metasploitable 2 running. So of course, this is going to be acting as the victim machine. And of course, I can enter ifconfig. I could see the IP address is 192.168.1.17. So of course, when you do a MMAP scan, you could actually see all the running services within this particular machine and we're going to try to exploit the SMB service. So of course, um, in Sunbar, when configured with a writable file share and white links, which are enabled by default, can also be used as a backdoor of sort to access files that were not meant to be shared. So the example below uses a Metasploit module to provide access to the root file system using anonymous connection and a writable share. So we can enter man's SMB client as we'll be trying to use SMB client to help us find out more information about the service that is running on the victim machine. So of course, as a client, it can help us talk to a SMB server. And of course, it offer uh, certain kind of interfaces, kind of, kind of very similar to FTP as well. So of course, there are different commands, perimeters, and options that we can choose from to help us exploit the Metasploitable 2. So the first step we're going to do is we're going to enter SMB client dash L slash slash 192.168.1.17. So it's going to ask for root password. We don't know what's the root password. We enter and we could see the domain, the OS, the server version as well as the, the other share, shareable within this particular um, victim machine. So we could see all the share name over here as well. And of course, uh, using looking at the information that has been provided here is pretty straightforward. So we can enter MSF console. So I got to start um, service. Postgre SQL start. So you need Postgre SQL to be running in order for you to start Metasploitable 2 or in order to start Metasploit. So we're starting Postgre SQL. So now that Postgre SQL is started, we can enter MSF console dash Q. So this pretty much forces us not to show the, the beginning of the screen. Okay, so we're going to use one of the modules to help us exploit into the Metasploitable 2. So you enter use auxiliary admin SMB sambar symbolic link tra traversal so once we've done this we can say show options and these are all the the name the smb share and all and the likes the, the parameters that we need to fill in in order for us to exploit the the machine so we enter set our host 192.168.1.17 and then of course after which we set the smb share as tem tmp and once you have done that you can enter exploit so we are trying to exploit the, the machine. So it says we're connecting the server and we are trying to mount the writable share TMP, trying to link the root FS to the root file system and now access the following share to browse the root file system. So the auxiliary module execution has been completed. So what's next? Next, what we're trying to do is we can pretty much launch another terminal which can help us provide the direct access with now that the exploit has successfully completed. So we use SMB client again. 192.168.1.17 followed by slash TMP which has been exploited. So it asks as for as the root password, but we have no idea what is the root password. So we hit enter and now we have logged in successfully to SMB. So we enter CD, for example, root FS. We can CD ETC. And of course we can enter more past the blue D. So we literally see what are all the users available. Uh, within this particular machine there's a lot more things that we can do as well you pretty much can use this smb connection to to do a re renumeration of all the services usernames different processes they're running in the victim machine and with this there's a lot more you can do to further the exploit of the of the server 
So there you've seen how easy it was to actually exploit the SMB process within the operating system. So of course, there are many, many techniques that are available to stop such attacks from occurring. And there are many other ways of de or defensive mechanisms that we can embed within the enterprise network to help us defend against many of these covert attacks happening within the enterprise environment. So of course, I hope you have learned something valuable today in today's tutorial. And if you like what you have just watched, feel free to subscribe. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. And thank you for watching.